Hello and welcome back to another episode of my indie game devlog series. In today's video we'll be diving into the stylizing topic and I want to show you what I did to the game environment to jump from this <laughs> to this. I also want to mention that this is not a guide, it's more of a way how I do it and what I do so it meets my personal taste of a good looking game. Okay, let's go. One of the first things players notice when they enter the game world is the sky. A skybox is like a canvas that paints the backdrop of your game's atmosphere. It's super important in setting the tone and mood of your game, so that's why it is the first thing that I styled, because the Unity default skybox... Ah, uh, <laughs> you know, if you know, you know. Whether it's a clear blue sky, a mesmerizing sunset or a mysterious night sky, a well-chosen skybox can immerse players and make the whole in-game world feel alive. I could not decide, so I coded an entire day and night system, which includes all of that. I also made a video about that, you can watch it after this one. In my game I used the free fantasy skybox pack. I'll leave a link to the Unity asset store in the description. Fog isn't just about hiding distant objects for performance reasons. It's about adding depth and atmosphere to the game world. In addition, the fog is good to trigger the adventure spirit of the player. He can ask himself, hmm, what is behind the fog? With fog in my game I can create a sense of mystery. Also, with this layer of visual interest I can kinda merge the environment objects together. For my personal taste, it seems like a glue which can hold world entities together. Therefore, we can use the fog color to set the right mood or the right glue color for the current environment the player is in. Lighting is a game changer when it comes to setting the mood of our game world. Whether it's bright and sunny or super dark because it's rainy and the storm is coming. Also, the entities in your world can, I would say, interact with other objects. Here, for example, you can see the light flickering from a flame on a torch. The whole thing gives the environment a bit more atmosphere and shows the player that the game world is not one-dimensional. To come back to my day and night system, the color of the light changes also in interaction with the time of the day and give the player more graphical depth. Shadows are more than just the dark areas on the ground. No, they provide us quite everything I mentioned before, depth and realism. Did you notice that the whole world seemed flat before? It looked very disgusting in my opinion, but with the shadows activated and adjusted, it adds a sense of connection between the objects. For performance reasons, I decided to use hard shadows, which have, I think it's 50% opacity. Maybe one day if I get my performance on a better level, I can use soft shadows, but everything in its time. Wow, as often as I use that, that could be my channel slogan. Godray particles, also known as volumetric lights or sun rays, are those mesmerizing beams of light that stream through openings like trees or windows. In the video you see that the god ray is pretty alone and not in between a forest or something, because in this place I want something holy to happen. For example, a gift from an NPC or something, but I can use these particles everywhere now where I want some aesthetic fake light. These particles add a touch of magic to my game world, guiding players' attention and making scenes feel ethereal. They could transform the set forest into a magical area. These small details can have a huge impact when it comes to stylizing games. Butterflies fluttering around and can add life and movement to our environment. And in the night I replace the butterflies with fireflies, so even if it's dark, something is happening. Players might not consciously focus on them, but subconsciously. They enhance the immersion and make the world feel authentic. Of course, other particles can help too, like a bit of dust flying around, maybe in combination with the god ray. Okay, the last one, post-processing effects are like the cherry on the top. I use the color correction to make the colors pop and to add a cinematic flair. To focus on the center of the screen, I also use a vignette in my post-processing. And to get the typical stylized look, I also use a small amount of bloom, but it's a balancing act between dreamy good looking and, okay, what is this? These effects will dramatically enhance the overall look of our game. And there you have it! By incorporating these stylization techniques from skyboxes and fog to post-processing effects and particles like butterflies, like fireflies, like flying dust around, you name it, I try to not just create a simple linear game world, but an experience for the players. I hope you enjoyed the topic around stylizing. If it has, then I would be very happy if you subscribe to this channel and leave a like there. Thanks for joining me in this episode. See you in the next one.